And here it is, the latest Samsung Galaxy S flagship, the Samsung Galaxy S9. It's Joshua Figara, what's going on everybody? And we're here to take a look at Samsung's latest device and tell you everything that it brings to the table considering this is the ninth generation of an already high powered line of smartphones. Now, when you look back on it, the Galaxy S8 and in some ways even the Galaxy S7 were already wonderful in their own ways. And they delivered a number of different features that a lot of smartphones have now. And with the Galaxy S9, Samsung is trying to continue that trend, but we wouldn't be surprised if it was a little bit difficult. Which is why it was almost surprising to us that when we left our meeting, taking a look at this phone for the time that we did, we actually still had a lot to talk about. When it comes to the design language, it's all pretty much the same with the glass on glass design, but there is this lilac purple color that you're already seeing in this video. And yes, we'll talk about it in a second, but there are two lenses on the back of this Galaxy S9 Plus that I'm using for the majority of this video. Now the overall footprint for these phones remains the same as before, however the screen has been tweaked a little bit. We don't really have a close up of it, but the screens don't really bleed all the way over to the edges anymore. This is still the infinity display, but Samsung wanted to minimize the potential accidental touches that you'll have on the sides when holding the phone in one hand. On top of that, the Super AMOLED screen is made just a tiny bit brighter, so it's something that you might notice, especially in broad daylight. But it's when you go around the body of the device that you realize there are a couple of key changes. The first one we'll talk about, and is one you probably saw already, is the fingerprint reader. It is now below the camera package, and that makes it easier to reach with your index finger. No matter which way you slice it, this is better for anyone that wants to use their fingerprints as the main way of unlocking the device. However, Samsung is obviously moving towards other biometric meters, like for example using the face scanner or the iris scanner, and this time putting them together into what they call the intelligence scan. Basically, you're going to scan both your face and your eyes, and at any given time, if it's not able to use one of the measures, it will use the other, so that you always have a way of unlocking the phone while you're just looking at it. And in case you're wondering, yes, the headphone jack still remains, but right next to it and past the USB Type-C port is a new speaker. And the reason for that is because that's one of two speakers. Yes, stereo speakers are now available on the Galaxy S9 and they are certified by Dolby Atmos. They get really loud and we did a small comparison compared to the single speaker of the Galaxy S8 and the sound is just louder, richer, and fuller. And underneath the surface, you get all of the bits and pieces that you would expect. Every bit of connectivity, the Snapdragon 845 is the bump up in performance, and you also get 6GB of RAM on the larger S9+, Plus, putting it that little step above the original, smaller model. The batteries are all the same as well from before, you have 3000mAh in the smaller unit and 3500 in the bigger one. But that brings us to what was really considered here in the new version of Samsung's Galaxy S flagship, the camera. You're going to hear a lot about this camera because we actually think that this new feature that we're about to talk about is something all manufacturers will be trying to do in the future, and that is adding a hardware mechanical iris. Photo purists will probably like the fact that software is not dictating everything anymore as there's a bit of hardware actually at work here. If you look closely, the iris or the aperture is actually opening and closing. There is an iris in there that goes at f1.5 aperture, which is incredible for low light performance, but then it can also close down to f2.4 if you want to have wider focus, like for landscape scenes for example. Consider for a second that f1.5 is still better than the f1.7 that we had in previous models, including the Galaxy Note 8. And speaking of that, you have these enhancements in the main camera on top of the telephoto lens at f2.4 that comes from the Note 8 and is available on the S9 Plus now. Samsung's processing is also getting a bump up here with multi-frame image processing. The S9 comes with DRAM on the actual camera module so that it's able to store a, a number of different images that are processed for detail, colors, contrast, and noise. In a split instant, the camera takes 12 images that are sorted into batches of four and the software then uses all the detail and information to produce the noise overall. This happens a few different times, gets three different best photos, and then does it one more time so that those three photos become one final incredible photo. That DRAM is also used for super slow motion video, which is a fun addition that we already had some fun using during our meeting. At 720p resolution, you now have 960 frames per second capture. But what Samsung tried to do is make it easier by adding in an auto mode, where the camera will figure out when the motion is happening so it knows when to capture that super high speed recording. 
And if you have any Animoji envy, then Samsung has brought their own version of something like that called the AR emoji. The camera captures a face and then creates a sort of caricature of that person, a little bit like a Bitmoji if you're a Snapchat avid user. And that AR emoji can be customized with a number of different hairstyles from a plethora of different colors, different eyewear, different pieces of clothing, and can be catered to the user's desire. When you hit save, it saves all of the options and you can use the front-facing camera in order to do an AR-like avatar, where when you move your head and you move parts of your face, the AR emoji does it all too. It also saves something like 18 GIFs to the phone's gallery so that you can easily share a number of different emojis, literally, to your friends. The camera also helps enhance Bixby a bit, as Bixby has been updated to provide some better augmented reality experiences. Like for example, live translation has been given some enhancements, but one thing that we did see here is the ability to recognize food. Now, it might not be super accurate all the time, at one point it thought that the bagel spread was ice cream, but we can see where that might be a little bit confusing. So it seems that Samsung really put their work into addressing the main parts of a phone that people want. The media consumption experience is already great with the Infinity display, but now the sound experience is even better. We're looking forward to putting some high-powered headphones into that headphone jack and seeing how it sounds when you just want some private listening time. After that, you have the camera, which is bolstered to have even more fun modes, and that AR emoji is great for anyone that wants to fully express themselves in very unique ways. And with all of the power and performance that these phones already had, you're just getting more of that in the S9, including with Bixby and Google Assistant both in there so you can have your own AI available at the ready. Three colors of this powerful phone will be made available in the US, Midnight Black, Lilac Purple, and Coral Blue. There is a Titanium Gray, but it's not coming to the US. It's not really certain how much they will cost just yet, but you won't be surprised if they get a little bit close to that $1,000 mark, and the pre-orders will start on March 2nd, ahead of it going on sale on March 16th. If you happen to have a more recent Samsung device or even just a recent phone in general, you could get the deepest discount on there by trading in that phone and getting up to $350 off the latest device. And you might want to check it out because Samsung might once again be pioneering another movement in the smartphone camera game, especially with its hardware and mechanical additions that really excite us. But then we're going to go ahead and pose the question off to you. What do you think of the Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus? Let us know in the comments down below and our top comments might get mentioned in a future piece while we are here in Barcelona for Mobile World Congress. Let us know what you think of this phone, of all of the announcements at MWC, and sound off in the comments below so that we can see what you guys think of these great phones that are coming out in 2018. Keep it tuned to Android Authority, head on over to AndroidAuthority.com for all of the best stuff, and then subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because we are your source for all things things. Android.